Well, hey everyone. Over these last few weeks, I have been inundated with questions and comments, all stemming from a video that I posted about five years ago. A video where I was sharing the solution that I had found for insulating my cabin floors. A method that I use that is super simple. Anyone can install it. It's not miserable to work with like fiberglass insulation or rock wool. A lot easier than custom fitting foam board. Easier to work with than any insulation product that I have ever used. But the best part about it is not only does it work remarkably well, but the rodents have never bothered it. So lots and lots of questions have been coming in and I told everyone I will do a follow-up video and I will share my experience with the product and show you how I'm using it in other applications now. But one question that came in repeatedly where people were asking, well, this video is five years old, how is it working out? Is there anything that you would change? Have the rodents destroy it? Let's see how it is performing after five years of installation. Everything looks just like the day we put it up. Nothing's been torn at. You see, this is really hard to film because I'm laying under here on my back and trying to roll around. But everything looks great, right? Um, I keep this closed up and there's no mold that you can see here. Everything looks great. I mean, the underside of this old camp here is a mess, but it was built before I was born and it was just kind of thrown up, up here in the woods. It served as a hunting camp. And there's all kinds of old timbers under here running every which way and supports thrown up. Can you imagine the horror show it would have been trying to cut and place styrofoam insulation under here? And trying to get around all of this old bridging and everything else, even with, um, with fiberglass insulation, and trying to put mesh under here and cut everything to fit. Crawling under here one time to staple this up was enough. But to get under here and try and get the insulation run with all of this old bridging and everything, then running wire and all the finger pokes involved with that. And then you'd have to run some poly because the dampness under here would destroy the paper on the insulation or it would get into the insulation. So we stapled up the bubble foil and we have warm floors and I have no reason to make a change and as you can see everything is in perfect shape. All right. That's nice and warm. That's warm right there and it's not damp at all. Not at all. Okay, that's nice and dry and it's warm, but this side of the bubble foil is cold. So if it didn't work, why would this be cold and this be warm? All right? I think having this right against the warm surface works marvelous because it reflects that heat right up right away. If it was down here, this cavity would be warm, but I don't think the floor itself would be as warm. So I gotta get a stapler and staple that back up. Let's go down and check the other side. That's the cubby hole over there that I crawled through a minute ago. Now I'm down the other end and you can see here the skirting. It's insulated, one layer of oval foil. That's the exterior right there. <laughs> it's perfect. Can't ask for better. And down there in that corner is the trap beneath the shower. That trap is full of water like it's supposed to be. And it's never been frozen. And it's, what, two feet outside the skirting? All right? Never been frozen. Now this little shed I have shown you before, 
I have it skirted on three sides, but the skirting isn't insulated. And the back of the shed, over here, is still open. I never finished the skirting. And I've shown you this on other videos, that we would store our drinking water in here. We have all of our big jugs sitting on the floor. And we had our propane freezer in here. In the winter time, we would leave the window open because it would actually get too warm in there because of the heat generated by the freezer. If it got below zero, we would close the window almost entirely, just leave it open a tiny bit. If I closed it entirely, it would get too warm. It would make too warm of an environment for the freezer, and that just makes the freezer have to burn more propane. So that would heat that building, and the jugs would be sitting on the floor, and I've shown you this. Even with that open, one layer of bubble foil in three-quarter inches of plywood between the water and the outside air, and they didn't freeze. Let's take a peek at the insulation. Yeah, up under here, everything is just like it was. Now this foil was laid out over the top of the joist, and this is the way I prefer it. But on the camp, like I said, it was built before I was born. Right? I doubt that foam board or fiberglass would be in that condition. Let's go down to the workshop. I'll crawl under there and see. I got my generator going today because we never get any sun anymore. Only two days of full sun per month. That's our allotment now. But I'm not going to get on that topic right now. Not today. We're talking about what's under the buildings, not what's above. Now the workshop is all skirted as you can see, but I never got around to building my door. So that is wide open. So let's go underneath and see how the foil looks. I haven't been under here in a long time. All right, look. This is blanketing on top of the joist. And you've seen me build that. It's perfect. There's no other insulation in this floor. Okay, just a single layer of bubble foil. And on top of that is three quarter inch Advantec. All right, man. I'm doing my best to film under here. But you can see, man, the proof is in the freaking pudding. I wouldn't put it in every darn structure that I build if it didn't work. All right? So people can say what they want and do it however they want. And I'm going to keep doing it this way. And I'm doing it because it works. So as you can see, <laughs> the insulation beneath my floors is still in the same condition as the day that I installed it. Even though it's right out there in the open where rodents can get at it. I showed you that this structure here, I never installed a door in the skirting. It's wide open. Anything can crawl under here. And right behind that wall is my chicken coop. Okay, so the set of chickens will attract rodents because of the feed and everything else. So rodents do go underneath this structure. They go underneath the camp. That little shed over there is open in the back. Rodents go under there. But yet, the insulation has never been touched. So when I posted the video that says how to insulate a cabin floor and keep it rodent free, I said that for a reason. <laughs> so I just showed you that my insulation has been in place for about five years. It's open and accessible to rodents, but yet it is left untouched. Now why is that? If I were to staple this to the underside of the floor joist, now I'm creating a warm cavity in this area between the bubble foil and the floor. And a warm cavity will attract rodents because it's a nice place to nest in. We find rodents in our fiberglass insulation because the fiberglass insulation creates a warm cavity Rodents get in there and they nest, or they take the fiberglass someplace else, they carry it off to some other warm cavity and use it as nesting material. But in the manner that I showed you here, by stapling it directly to my heated surface, I am offering them nothing. There's no place to nest here, therefore, 
my insulation stays in the condition that I just showed you. Now up until just recently, you have only seen me install this in the floors of my buildings. So the question that comes in the most is, can this be used in the walls and roofs? And it can. But like I've said before, a building needs to breathe. So this foil, I call it foil, I've called it bubble foil for lack of a better word, just because it rolls off the tongue a lot easier than saying reflective radiant barrier insulation. <laughs> But this is just plastic. It's bubble wrap. It's two layers of bubbles with a reflective surface on each side. And what makes it work so good is everyone knows that trapped air is a good insulator. So there's two layers of little bubbles in here and the reflective surface reflects the heat. It works remarkably well for something so thin. Okay, but it is plastic. So if you surround yourself with this in your structure, I think you're going to end up with some moisture problems or other problems further down the line. I always use fiberglass or a mineral wool type insulation in my walls. I always use this in the floors. And with my new structure over at the garage project, where we're going to be using the upstairs of that for our business, I showed you what I did so let's just take a quick sneak peek at how I insulated that roof using mineral wool insulation and bubble foil. So there's the raft vent running from eave to ridge. We have unfaced rock wool insulation and then the bubble foil will act as an insulating vapor barrier. Then there's going to be strapping 16 on center then the drywall. That three-quarter inch airspace between the drywall and the bubble foil will act as an insulation in itself. This will reflect heat back into the building. The other side is reflective and that will reflect any heat absorbed by the roof from the sun back upward. It should stay cool in here in the summer and warm in the winter. Now that system that I'm using over there is working out awesome and I'm going to continue that exact same application process in my future structures. Now when people ask if you can use this in the walls and the roofs, I'm going to put a link in the description below to the manufacturer's website, the manufacturer of the product that I use, which is Reflectix. On their website you will see several different application suggestions for using it in the walls and the roofs in the floors. I'm going to talk about a few of those here in another segment because there's a few of their application suggestions that I disagree with and I will tell you why. Let's talk about a few different applications. We'll stop beneath the floor system and work our way up. We'll talk about the pros and cons of different applications. My favorite way of installing this in the floor system is to roll it out over the top of my floor joist. I always roll it with the floor joist and never across them. I buy the foil that is 48 inches wide, therefore my seams will always land directly over the joist. I staple it to the joist, then I tape all of the seams with a metal tape and then I nail down my subfloor. And when you have this foil sandwiched between your floor joist and your subfloor, it creates a thermal break under your structure that works remarkably well. Now to everything in life, there's pros and cons. And the downsides to sandwiching the bubble foil between your floor joist and your subfloor, there's two downsides. First off, if you have it in there during construction, you have the danger of having rain trap beneath your floor system. If your system isn't covered properly and rain penetrates your subfloor, it won't penetrate the bubble foil and it will get trapped there. I always cover my floor system with a string embedded poly. Now I like to use a clear plastic for this. I get all my lines snapped before I cover it. Now I can put my walls up here 
and everything stays dry and then after I have the next level all covered over then I just run my knife along the inside edge and just this little piece of plastic stays under the wall and then this can be reused See? not a problem it's more expensive than regular plastic sheathing but it's worth the money if I get a rip in it the rip won't get very far because of the string now if you do get rain trapped beneath there you just get beneath the floor system slit the foil let it hang down let the water run out let everything dry out staple it all back up and tape the seams with the metal tape you'll be good as new the other drawback to this application as opposed to stapling it to the underside of your existing floor is you will run the risk of having squeaks in your floor system on most building sites that i have worked on we would put glue over the top of the floor joist before we nailed a subfloor to them. This would make everything bond together and eliminate the possibility of having squeaks. One precautionary measure is to use screws to screw your subfloor down instead of nails. But if you're going to screw the deck down, use screws that have threads that go all the way to the head and they don't have a smooth shoulder like this screw here. By having threads all the way to the head, it will screw everything down tight. By having a smooth shoulder here, it's really no different than nails. And if there's any sag or anything happening with your floor system and the wood moves against the shoulder, that is where the squeaks are generated. If squeaks are really an issue that you want to avoid, Simply don't roll the bubble foil out over the joist and install it under your floor system afterwards. You will eliminate that issue altogether. I want to show some examples here to answer a question that comes in all the time. This is the system that I use. These are the floor joists. In here, the foil is right against the bottom of the floor. I like this system because, like I said, it creates no inviting cavity for rodents. Any heat that is transmitted down through your floor is bounced back up into the floor, keeping the floor warm. This system here with the foil beneath the floor joist, you can see on the Reflectix website. And this is a question that comes in all the time. People ask, instead of doing this, can you just run the foil beneath the floor system? The only drawback to this system here is you are creating a warm cavity that might attract rodents. And I think this would bounce the heat back up into the house much quicker than this. I have not done it this way, so I cannot say from experience if this works any better or worse than this. But I know that this does not attract rodents in this mite. Here I've done a combination of the two systems. Using the system that I use with the foil right beneath the floor, bouncing the heat back up right away, and a blanket of foil beneath the floor joist. This might be advantageous over this, because if you have a damp crawl space, moisture can get at your, at your floor system, at your floor joist. If you're using pressure-treated floor joists, it's not an issue. But this, with the foil beneath it, prevents any moisture to getting into your floor system. So on that standpoint alone, this would be more advantageous than this. But here is a winning combination. You're bouncing the heat right up into the floor, and you're protecting the floor system. Any heat that is transmitted down through the solid mass of the wooden joist would be blocked and bounced back up. So if you want to spend the extra money on the foil, I think this would be a winning combination. In all of the years that you have seen me use this in my building projects, I was always applying it to the heated side of the building. For example, like I just showed you how we applied it to the roof of the garage. I didn't put this against the cold roof sheathing. This was the last product used before the drywall went on. It was on the inside of the insulation. 
This is just my opinion, folks, but I don't think it's a good idea to use any type of plastic product, because again, this is plastic, to put any type of plastic against a cold wall, like against the exterior sheathing. I say that because many years ago when I was a contractor, I did a big repair job on a house that a guy built himself. When he framed the wall up, he put plastic sheeting on the exterior of the wall studs before he sheathed it with board and batten. His thought process was to keep any air from getting past that sheathing. He knew that those old pine boards would eventually shrink and he'd get cracks and there would be air passing through them and the plastic would stop it from entering the wall. In theory, it's a good idea, but in reality, it was disaster. What happened was the cold air that would get past the wall sheathing hit that plastic, got trapped there, created moisture, and he had a disastrous situation. And it took a lot of work and a lot of money to redo. Okay, so that has stuck in my mind over the years. When I apply this to my structures, it's against the warm side, the interior wall, not the exterior wall, where cold air will just get trapped behind it. I can't say that will happen because I don't use it in that application, but the way that I use it, it works. I don't have any problems, so that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. So that's the way that I'm going to recommend it to you. Another suggestion that comes in all of the time from the misinformed is people say, why don't you just insulate the floors with rock wool? Rodents hate it. Well, let me tell you something, folks. Rock wool is a great product, and I use it all of the time in certain applications. But the myth about rodents not liking it is total BS. Let me show you some rodent riddled rock wool. I wanted to show you something here. All this mouse nest that I pulled out of the wall. People had said that rock wool insulation, that the mice didn't bother it, that it was really good stuff. Well, it is good stuff, but the thing about mice not bothering it, they took all of this rock wool and carried it and put it into a different section of wall. You can see there's a little bit of regular fiberglass in there too, but all that tan stuff is rock wool. Yeah. So trust me folks, mice love rock wool just as much as they love fiberglass and they're gonna make a mess of it. Okay, let's go over the comparison between my method and the methods that have been suggested by the peanut gallery. All right, that camp here is 24 by 24, 576 square feet. If I use fiberglass, an R19, R19, which is kind of middle of the road, is $495.36. If you put in fiberglass or rock wool, you're going to need insulation supports because if you use paper-faced insulation, the paper is supposed to go against the heated side of the building, not against the cold. So the paper would go up against the floor, which would give you no way of stapling it. So you're going to have to use insulation supports with either rock wool or fiberglass. So the supports would be $25. Steel mesh to cover all of that to keep the rodents out of it and you're gonna have fun doing that and good luck having every little nook and cranny sealed up especially in an out-of-whack floor system like I had to contend with here. So so far we got $495.36 for the fiberglass, $421.98 for the mesh, $25 for the supports. 
You can't stop there, folks, because if you're in a damp crawl space and that insulation is facing the dampness, you're going to have problems. So you're going to have to put up some poly, and a decent mill would be about $150. You'll need about $10 worth of staples and a box of Band-Aids. So, in total, I have $1,107.34 for fiberglass for 576 square feet of bubble file. <laughs> it cost me $340. Well, it would cost me at today's prices. It was quite a bit less than that when I put it up. $340 and about $5 worth of stables. Another method that comes up in the comment section all the time is why don't I just cut and fit foam board and put it between the floor joist? Well, personally, I think that would be a big pain in the butt, especially in an old structure like this camp. So if you want to crawl around and insert this stuff between your floor joist, I highly suggest that you put the foil against your floor system, then put in your foam board. The foam board doesn't have the reflective properties of the foil, and I think this would create a really nice floor. If you're thinking about using the foam board that's got the foil on each side, let me talk you out of it. I have used that stuff. It's a little bit softer than this rigid foam board. And the ants love it. They absolutely love it. And I have removed so much of that ant riddled foam board in so many projects in the past. And I will never use that in any of my structures ever again. So I hope you found this information to be beneficial. I tried to consolidate all of the questions and all of the information that I've learned over the years and put it right here in one spot. So now when questions come in, I can send people to this one video and hopefully they'll find the answers to their questions and maybe get some new ideas from what they learned here today and look at things in a different perspective. The bubble foil has worked out really good for me over the years for my needs, but everyone's situation is different. So maybe you can take some of the information that you learned here in this video and tweak it for your own individual needs for your building project. So hopefully you found it beneficial and you'll subscribe to the channel because I got a lot of DIY videos coming up in the near future. I'm back to work on my building project over there doing a lot of filming and I'll be putting together a lot of that information in a DIY series coming here soon. So anyway, folks, all the best to you, and God bless. Bubble foil is the answer! Bubble foil is the answer! It's Carl Reflectix, but the boss man's got the whole damn neighborhood babbling bubble foil. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss